Now gather around people and listen to my song It's awfully funny and she won't take long It's all about a crow and a hickory tree One little story that the crow told me One little story that the crow told me In a hickory tree Welcome to Harrisburg Opera Association's Opera in the Park production. We are so excited to share with you this virtual concert. I am Michael Gammon, the chair of the Fine and Performing Arts Departments at Harrisburg Academy, and I am thrilled to welcome you to this year's... Carrie Crockett, and you're watching INN's Earth Matters. My special guest is George Washington III, ornithologist and president and founder of OWLS, which stands for Ornithologist World League Society. Did I get that right? You did. So, in your recent editorial in The Times, you talk about the importance of birding and how it spreads awareness across multi areas. Could you elaborate on that? Certainly. Um, the areas are nature, environment, and inclusivity. These three things combined will shape a better world for everyone. See? That is why I found your article so compelling. You tie together the well-being of humanity and our planet with such a joy-filled activity. Well, thank you. Um, Indeed, birding is a joyful experience. Um, it's an activity which we all can participate in regardless of race, sexual orientation, culture, disability status, or background. And through this shared love of our feathered friends, we can build a community of humans that care about each other and the environment. Oh, oh yellow billed cuckoo. Up. Oh, sorry, I, I can't help myself. No apology necessary. Well, uh, getting back to what I was saying, the birds belong to all of us, and we belong to them. It's up to us to help them and protect their habitats. By doing so, we help each other and the planet. Such a simple concept, but really quite difficult to execute. Do you really think you can get your message across to most Americans, let alone the rest of the world? I do. It only takes one person to influence another positively and pass it on, and we do this with love in our hearts. Black and white warbler, there, right there. See, the warbler is one of the most populous birds on the East Coast. Whoa, and on CJ occasion, must know about this.
This is Celia. Did... Is that splashing? No. I must be interrupting something. Oh, no, not really. I was just having an existential moment with the song sparrow. It sounded like I was busy or about to prove to the world that Mellow Spies and Melodia has a true language system or anything. That really is quite a breakthrough. You know, you could just put that thing on silent. Yeah, yeah, I know. But then I would have missed your call. This must be kind of important. It kind of is. Uh, have you read George's recent editorial in the Times? Yes, I have. I thought it was an excellent call to our better selves. Good luck getting it across to anyone outside their subscription base. But this is why I'm calling. He was just interviewed on INN. By Carrie Crockett of Earth Matters. And this, this is huge. We could finally spread some awareness by getting U.S. birders organized. So this is for real, then? Yes, C.J., Okay, okay, okay. I know a guy. On a tree by a river, a little tom tit sings willow, tit willow, tit willow. And I said to him, Dicky Bird, why do you sit singing willow, tit willow, tit willow? Is it weakness of intellect, birdie? I cried, or a rather tough worm in your little inside? With a shake of his poor little head, he replied, Oh, willow, tit willow. Tit willow. He slapped at his chest as he sat on the bow, singing willow, tit willow, tit willow. And a cold perspiration bespangled his brow. Oh, willow, tit willow, tit willow. He sobbed and he sighed and a gurgle he gave and he threw himself into the billowy wave 
and an echo arose from the suicide's grave. Now I feel just as sure as I'm sure that my name is it Willow, Tit Willow, Tit Willow. That was blighted affection that made him exclaim, Oh Willow, Tit Willow, Tit Willow. And if you remain callous and obdurate, I shall perish as he did, and you shall know why. Though I probably shall not exclaim as I die. Oh, Willow, Tit Willow, Tit Willow. Hello? Tim. It's CJ. Do you have a moment? Hey, CJ. Sure. Great. I need to tap into your philanthropy and social media skills. Uh, okay. Have you read the Times or watched the news lately? <laughs> no. I've been about the mountains all weekend. I'm surprised they even have a signal right now. What's happening? Uh, you remember that lecture that George gave last year at the OWLS Birding Conference about nature and inclusivity? Yeah. Well... <laughs> He just went public with his concept yesterday in the Times and today, just now, on INN. What? Wait. This is very exciting. I'll say it is. It's even got me inspired, which is saying something. <laughs> I'm, I'm organizing all of our uh, birding colleagues to get the word out, but um, I need your finesse and connections. Are you on board? Of course. Thanks, Tim. No problem. You got it. Okay, bye. Bye. Once 
Jones had felt a fit. Philip will poison yet, 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 yet. For when she once had felt a fit, Philip will poison yet, 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 to make him more this goodly game, without suspect the jealousy, he were a churn and would a god, would see her fate for lack of food. For when she once had felt a fit, Philip will cry still yet, 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 For when she once had felt a fit, Philip will cry still yet, 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 Washington, D.C., and you're watching INN. It is extraordinary how this birding phenomenon has taken off. People from the United States and all over the world have banded together for the initiative Birding for a Better World in rural as well as urban and suburban areas with the simple message that through birding, both inclusiveness and environmentalism are attainable. Returning to Earth Matters is ornithologist George Washington III, president and founder of OWLS, which stands for Ornithologists World League Society. And also joining us is Tren Chun. She is a founder of a brand new birding group called Feather, which stands for Freedom for the Earth's Avians, Their Homes, Ecosystems, and Roosts. They're here to tell us more about the impact of this global initiative. George, it's so great to see you again, and welcome, Trent. Thank you. Thank you for having me back, Carrie. So starting with you first, George, can you explain how this movement has grown so quickly? Well, Carrie, the birding world is a tight-knit unit, and because of that, we can organize effectively. I especially thank my colleague Celia Kirk, the executive director of Oriole, ornithologists for reducing ignorance objectively, legally, and environmentally, who was brave enough to rally us in the first place, and environmentalist C.J. Gibbons, who got prominent philanthropist Tim Peters to develop a web presence and get the word out with his media, social media, and contact. But there were other sparks that spurred this movement, which brings me to you, Trent. Can you tell me what inspired you to start your organization and join Birding for a Better World? I didn't know where I was headed. I lost my Broadway job due to the pandemic and have moved back in with my parents until I could figure things out. I was asking myself, how could I be useful? How could I make a difference? Then I saw George's interview with you three months ago. That was quite a synchronistic moment, wasn't it? And you turned your despair into something positive. Can you tell us a little bit more about what your organization does? Well, my organization engages young people who are new to birding and teaches them how to steward their habitats while encouraging cooperation across all kinds of people, which really fits right in with BBW's message. I contacted George online, and that's when everything really took off. It was inspiring to hear from Xuan, and her involvement made me think that we needed a PSA, uh, something that would connect with young people and people of color. You're referring to the music video done by your cousin and famous rap artist Hawk. As I understand it, he donated his time, talents, and money to produce this video. That's right, he was incredibly generous. And he was quite enthusiastic about promoting this video too. It went completely viral across all streaming platforms the first week, and it engaged both the youth and urban sectors. It sure did. He mentioned that this was a crossover piece crafted to appeal to all kinds of people. Can you tell me what he meant? 
well, when we were little, there was this folk song that we used to do in class, and it was about a mighty turkey called the Turkey Song. It was great. Uh, we got to dance like one, and it made us think about turkeys in the wild. It also marked the beginning of our family birding together, and Hawk referenced that in his rap, and, well, the rest is history. And on that note, in case you haven't seen it, and even if you have, we're going to play it for you now. As I came over yonder's hill, I spied a mighty turkey. When I look up to the sky and see our winged allies fly, it makes me want to testify about how they make me feel inside. When Mother Nature surrounds me, she shares her primeval bounty, embracing my central being and banishing feelings of otherness. When things were top level bad, haters hating and the world gone mad, sequestering and festering, Desperate to be with people again, the birds adopted me. They flocked to me and I to them. Together we realized that humans and avians coincide. As I came over yonder's hill, I spied a mighty turkey. He flapped his wings and he spread his tail and his feet stepped swift and perky. To listen to the earth as I do, we'd all understand her point of view. She and her sister, Mother Nature, would shower us with healing. It just takes a conversation to find some common ground, to understand the connection to us, the birds, and everything. Together, we're birds of the same feather, teaching, caring, and reaching out to share love and empathy. We're learning a better way to treat all our fellow creatures. By stewarding our planet, we save her, we all win and survive. Just wow! 
How can't you want to go out and go birding and save the world now? This movement continues to grow, not just with young people, but across all ages. Do you have any thoughts why, George, Chen? Well, I believe that people around my age and younger need something positive to work on because of how difficult year we have all been having. To be able to be part of something good that benefits our Earth and the creatures that live on her was the right and relevant things to do. Well stated, Chen. George, do you have any closing thoughts? Well, at our last interview, I mentioned that the birds belong to all of us and we belong to them. And by helping them, we help each other and the planet. Through this mutual effort, those participating have proven that we all care enough about one another, the birds, their habitat, and our Mother Earth to protect this fragile ecosystem so we can all thrive. This is happening because we reached out to one another collectively, sometimes just one person at a time. The effort keeps growing, and I am sending all intents that enough of us will be able to join together for this initiative to be a success. It has to be. The future of all of us depends on it. Thank you, George and Shren. Thank you. If you would like more information on how you can participate in Birding for a Better World, visit www.bbw.avian. That concludes this segment of Earth Matters. Thank you so much for joining us. Woodpecker!
losing those held dear. I knew the world could change. My purpose became clear. I did what anyone would do to keep us sound. By sharing nature's love, I made our common ground. Kindness is a gentle wind that hails like a chime. A calling to achieve good deeds. One person at a time. One person at a time. One person at a time. <laughs> Here we go. We're going to do our call call recording one more time. Are you ready, people? I know you are. Ready? Yeah. Go ahead, Adam. And look. People and listen to my song, it's awfully funny and she won't take long. It's all about a crow and a hickory tree. One little story that the crow told me. One little story that the crow told me in a hickory tree. I had a girl with red hair. One day she traced my grizzly bear. People thought she's out of her mind cause she ran around with a bear chasing her. One little story that the crow told me in a hickory tree. I had a cow all dressed in silk. One day she fell and she sprained her milk. My wife laughed cause she thought it was a cinch Cause milked that cow with a monkey wrench One little story that the crow told me In a hickory tree I got me a suit of union underwear To keep out the cold and the chilly air I wore them nine months without exaggeration Cause I couldn't take them off Cause I lost the combination <laughs> One little story that the crow told me <laughs> In a hickory tree <laughs> Way down south where the cotton grows My daddy was a shaving and he cut off his nose Stuck her back on upside down. Every time it rains, he nearly drowns. One little story that the crow told me in a hickory tree.